Hi everyone, this video is the solution for example 5 of the topic of beam deflection. This is supposed to be an example that summarizes all the other four, so it looks a little bit more complicated than before because it's supposed to take a little bit of information from every exercise that you've seen before and compiles everything in a single problem. So in this case we have a simply supported beam, so we're going to take again Z to go from left to right. And since this is a simply supported beam, we're interested in finding the vertical reaction at A. And for that, we're going to do the sum of moments at B equal to zero. From this equation, we can get that VA times 6 minus 30 times 5 minus 24 times 2 times 4 plus 6 and then minus 24 times 1 must be equal to 0. From this equation, we get that 6VA minus 360 equals 0, and therefore we get that VA is going to be equal to 60 kilonewtons and pointing upwards. So now that we have our reaction VA, we can write it here in green where the support is, so we can start writing our moment equation. Now, for complex structures like this one, the equation for moments must be done slowly and very methodical, so then you make sure you don't make any mistake. So let's start with the load of 60. The load of 60 at the point with distance z from the, the beginning will create a moment that is positive, so tension on the bottom, so 60 times z. Then we can continue with the other load, so we'll get minus 30 and then z minus 1, because the application of the 30 is at 1. When it's the case of the UDL, so we're going to do minus 24. Because the UDL starts at z equals 1, we're going to still add a z minus 1. But since it's a UDL, we have to do squared and divide pi by 2. Now, the way that we take into consideration that the load of 24 finishes at z equals 3 is by adding a term 24 over 2, and that z minus 3, and then squared. Again, the idea of this first equation here is that the UDL goes all the way to the end of the beam. So we are adding another term here in red that will cancel out that green equation. Okay, so we're done with the UDL now. Next is a moment of uh, 6. In this case, this moment of 6 will make this sort of rotation. So it will be tension on the bottom on the right side of, of the moment. So it will be plus... 6 and then z minus 4 and because it's a moment to the power of 0 and finally we have that load of 24 so minus 24 and then z minus 5. In short we need to add these uh, Macaulay's functions in the point of applications of the load and then in case is a concentrated moment we put exponent of 0 like this one if it's a UDL we put an exponent of 2 and then if it's a concentrated load, we put exponents of 1 that are hidden here. So the idea here is you follow very carefully these uh, steps and you can always get your moment equation, no matter how complicated the problem might look in the beginning. So now, once we get this moment equation, we just follow the principles that we have been working with. So we establish that then the curvatures are going to be minus the moment divided by EI. So what we're going to get is 1 over EI, and then I'm just going to copy this expression, but changing the signs. So minus 60z plus 30z minus 1 plus 12z minus 1 squared minus 12z minus 3 squared plus 6z minus 4 to the power of 0. And that's not plus 6, it's minus. And then finally, plus 24z minus 5. And here I can close the brackets that I started at the 1 over EI. So now we can proceed and get our rotation that is, as it was before, the integral of the curvatures dz. So we're going to get 1 over EI. And now we can substitute this with minus 30z squared minus 15 z minus 1 squared plus 4 z minus 1 cubed minus 4 z minus 3 q 
cubed minus 6 z minus 4 and here is to the power of 1 and then finally plus 12 z minus 5 squared and then finally plus c okay so now i have my rotation equation i can get my deflection equation which will be the integral of the rotation dz so that will be 1 over ei minus 10 z cubed minus 5 z minus 1 also cubed and this is just plus z minus 1 to the power of 4 minus z minus 3 to the power of 4 minus 3 z minus 4 squared plus 4 z minus 5 cubed plus cz plus d so there's only two errors here this plus this should be plus 15 and here should be plus plus 5 so there was two mistakes here and here now that we got to this complicated equation we need as usual to use our boundary conditions to calculate the integration constants c and d in this particular case since we have a simply supported beam the boundary conditions are the displacement at z equals 0 is 0 that is support a and then the displacement at z equals 6 is also 0 that is support b so we can write them as y when z equals 0 is 0 and then when z equals 6 is also 0 so we can solve these two equations so if we take when z equals 0 if we take the displacement we will see that all of these terms will go to 0 except d so we get d divided by ei it's going to be equal to zero and we can conclude that for that d is zero but now when we replace with z equals six we are going to have a little bit of a big equation to work with so let's try to go slowly not to make any mistakes so one over ei and now we're going to start replacing minus 10 times six cubed plus five times five cubed plus four to the power of four minus 3 to the power of 4 minus 3 times 2 squared plus 4 times 1 cubed plus c times 6. And we know that all of this has to be equal to 0. So if we take the calculator, we're going to get that 6c. Okay, there was a mistake here. This 4 should have been a 5. So it's 5 to the power of 4, not 4 to the power of 4. So now if we take the calculator, we're going to get that 6c minus 999 equals to 0. So we can conclude that c is going to be plus 333 3, 3 divided by 2. So this means we can finalize this problem and conclude that our deflection with respect to z is 1 over ei times, and now minus 10 z cubed plus 5 let me scroll up so i can copy it z minus 1 cubed plus z minus 1 4 minus z minus 3 also 4 minus 3 z minus 4 squared plus 4 z minus 5 cubed and then finally we can replace c with plus 333 3, 3 over 2 times z and this concludes this problem so even a problem like this that can look very complicated that doesn't mean it's difficult just means it takes a lot more time to to solve but at the end just following the steps that we've learned in the other exercises and the other examples you should be able to get to this final equation so thank you for watching and have a nice day